I chose to read this morning from 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 through verse 3. And this message was on my heart last weekend, and I've been all around this in this pulpit since I've been here as pastor. And so I want to relate to this verse 1 through 3. And the title of my message is a word by word observation of 1 John 3, verse 1 through 3. And I got this word observation from the word behold. That's going to be our first word. And we're doing word study in this passage that I'm preaching from today. The word behold takes in the word observation to look at, to see. And we are seeing our Lord right here at God the Father Himself. And of course, we're in His Son, the Lord Jesus, and by the Holy Spirit of God. So I want to talk about it in just a moment when I get started. A word by word observation of 1 John 3, verse 1 through 3. And doing that in view or in light of the five chapters of 1 John. And I have a message and I preached it here. 1 John chapter 1. It kind of give us a start now and a little overlook of, of these five chapters. A little highlight of each chapter. In chapter 1 we see the confirm of relationship. A confirmation that you and I that have been saved by God's grace and brought into the family and the fold of God. I tell you, we've got a right relationship with God the Father. And that's through His Son, the Lord Jesus. A blood right and a birth right. And with that, a Bible right to have a relationship as a Son of God with God the Father and through His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And so the first chapter deals with a confirm or confirmation of a relationship. And along with that, embodied in that first chapter and the second chapter, we, we see the call of fellowship. And you'll see that coming up several times in the first chapter of 1 John, along with the chapter number 2. The confirm of relationship and the call of fellowship. And then when we look at chapter number 2, we see, as I've done said, also the the call of fellowship, but the caution of friendship. First John 2.15, he tells us to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And if any man love the world, the love of the Father is in him. A caution about friendship. The Lord warns us about being a friend to the world, and we ought to be a friend to the world of mankind. That's un we ought to not single out uh, people that are unsafe and because of whatever they might be into and the life they live we still ought to have a burden for the world that's unsafe God shall love the world the world of mankind but he's talking about worldly things and things that Satan attracts and allures and Satan's attempt to uh, uh, to deceive the masses of people worldliness and wickedness go together and so the call of fellowship and the caution of friendship in chapter 2. And in the chapter I'm reading from today, chapter 3, we see the called, the called of sonship. And we're going to deal with that just a little bit in the message today. When we come to chapter number 4, we see the condition of impostorship. When he warns us about false teachers and I warns us of those that would come with a spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is the is God. Amen. And so a warning. We call it a a condition of impostorship. Those that are a fraud, those that are that that are just absolutely in pretense. And then in chapter five we see as we we look over this chapter and we see the certainty of surety ship. Certainty, something we know, we are assured of 
these sure things that are laid down in the Scripture. But I want to pray now, and then we're going to read this text that I mentioned in 1 John 3, verse 1 through 3. And then I'll bring this little message. Father, I thank You on this Lord's Day that You permitted us and count us this opportunity. And we honor You, Lord, with our time to come together on this Lord and Lord's Day. And we're not complaining. We're not coming down on You, Lord, or, or any, any individual person because we're low in, in attended. But we're just thankful, Lord, You've allowed us as we have this little audience on this day. And I pray you will help our hearts, Lord, that we might just uh, take in your word and take in, encourage ourselves in your word and cheer us up on this day. And Lord, let us be reminded what the scripture have to say. I pray you'll use your word, Lord, that you'll just uh, saturate our heart and put us in a place, Lord, where we can stay thankful. Unto you we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now John writing under inspiration of the Holy Ghost, this beloved of God himself, and this disciple whom Jesus loved. Amen. And it says, Behold, that means to look at. Look, look, look at or see. And if uh, we see this word good for John's writing, John 1 29, he penned it down and said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. He wrote it down of Pilate, which said in John 19 5, Behold the man. And then he penned it down again in in Jude verse 14, Jude penned it down and talked about the second coming of our Lord Jesus. When he said, Behold, he cometh with him thousands of his saints. How to execute judgment upon all. And I'm saying on this day, he's good. John was good, along with Jude and, of course, the Apostle Paul, to use this word, Behold. It means to look at, to see. Hebrews 2 9 said, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with honor and glory, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. In Hebrews 12 2, looking. There's another way to use this word, behold, looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. And so an observation, we're looking at an observation of First John 3, verse 1 through 3. Amen. And He said, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Now he's already addressed, he's already addressed the Father, that's God the Sovereign, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And our Father, I'm telling you, in our relationship, we, we call him Abba Father, Galatians chapter 4. He sent the Spirit into our heart, whereby we cry, Abba Father, Galatians 4, 4 through 6. But then we see us right here identifying you and I that are in Christ. Born ones, children of God that John speaks of. But he said he's bestowed his love upon us. That we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. And he said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Now let's just look at this and wade in to this lengthy message I have on my heart 
And I'll try to share a little bit of it. I kind of just run over it a little bit this morning. But we see as we observe uh, 1 John 3, verse 1 through 3, we see our divine Father in verse 1. Our heavenly Father, amen, or the one that we're in relationship with as a child of God, the one we reverence and respect, the one that has made over to us His righteousness. Verse John 2 and verse 29 said, If we, if you know that He is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of Him. And so by birth and by blood, we have a relationship with God the Father. We can call Him our divine Father. And so in relationship, in reverence, in respect, in, real, in righteousness, and in reliance, God's children have someone we can rely on. Amen. I'll tell you one we can run to and depend on a faithful God. Amen. And so kind of connects with what I said in 1 John 1, the confirm or the confirmation of relationship. Amen. Not only is He the God of love, but He's the God of mercy. Amen. Oh, Ephesians 2, 4, where would you and I be if God had not been merciful? And he said, but God, in Ephesians 2, 4, but God who is merciful. Oh, but God in his mercy. And I need to thumb over there and get this verse. And it's not, it's not coming, I'm not getting it out real clear enough. So I'm going to thumb over there and look at it. Ephesians 2, 4, he talked about our fallen condition in the first man, Adam. Oh, yes, in sin and dead and trespass and sin and our course and our, our spirit that worked in us in the children of disobedience. But he said in verse 4, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. So I'm talking about our divine Father. I'm telling you, our heavenly Father. We're related to Him. He, we're His sons, thank God. But He's the God of all grace. Amen. First Peter 5, 10. Peter said, But the God of all grace who hath called us into thy eternal glory but Christ Jesus, after you suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. He's the God of all comfort in 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. Amen. Verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Where would we be again if He didn't comfort us and console us and come to our rescue? Amen. Oh, He's a good... God of goodness, amen. All the goodness and the greatness of God that the psalmist pinned down in Psalm 145, amen. And so we see our divine Father, who He, who he is. He's the great God, Jehovah, the God of mercy, the God of grace. But this text says, the God of love. What manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. What love, I'll tell you, no, no way can we, can we explain the, the love of God. But i say at the top of the list, He's a God that loves mankind. Yes, He does. Amen. John 3, 16, all of us probably could quote that verse for God. That's God the Father. So loved the world. That's you and I that were in Adam. Uh, sinners, I'm telling you. God so loved the world that He gave. He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And no man will ever stand 
and all the wicked from Cain on down. Every religionist and ever, I tell you, ever agnostic and ever liberal and ever infantile and all I'm telling you that's lost without will stand before God at the last judgment, the white throne judgment of God. They're going to stand before God. God's decreed it that every knee should bow at things in heaven, things in earth, and things under there, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the God the Father. Amen. To the glory of God, I'm telling you, but all oh, the divine Father in His love. Amen. What love? This Bible said what manner of love. This speaks about the method of His love and the way of His. It's God I'm, it's in the very nature of God to love. Look at 1 John chapter. Notice in 1 John chapter 2. Four, right here it is, the next page over. If you got the Schofield Bible, from where I read my text, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Amen. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Amen. The very nature and the very essence of God the Father Himself is love. Amen. And I know that there's a lot of folk just want to stay right there, but he's a God of judgment. Amen. Hebrews 12, 29, Paul said, but our God is a consuming fire. Not only is it God of love and a God of, of judgment, but I'm seeing on this day Right looking down at this Bible, I'm preaching from today. I'm seeing his love has been bestowed upon us. Had he not a loved, had he not sent his only begotten son into the world, I tell you, we would not know what love is. Look at it. Right here it is in 1 John chapter 4, and it said in verse 9, in this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him here in His love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be a propitiation for our son sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Amen. All the, the, the manner of His love. And then there's a measure of His love. Amen. Oh, thank God. His love, I tell you, you couldn't measure it. You couldn't. We really don't have the vocabulary to describe the love of God. Look over in Ephesians, and I'm trying trying to get some of these verses that are at just now coming upon my heart that I'm going to share with you this morning. We'll just get a portion of this message in in, in our lesson today. We've got plenty of time, and I don't want to misuse the time. But look at Ephesians chapter number 3. In Paul's prayer, his second prayer that we've been mentioning in Ephesians. And it said in verse, notice in verse number 16, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That's a part of us that is saved. This inward man that is of God. And he said that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. You being rooted and grounded in love and may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Well, that's a measure of His love. The height, the depth, the width. I'm telling you in all sides and measuring the love of God. Amen. A God, I'm telling you, that loved us in eternity past. Oh, yes, He did. Loved us before the foundation of the world. Knew, knowing that we'd be sons of Adam. Amen. And decreed that everyone that the Holy Spirit would bring in, he'd put in Christ. That's love, if I know. Loved us from the foundation of the world. Amen. And so we see our divine Father in verse 1. And then we see our dignity 
in verse number one. Amen. I've said that to our divine Father who He is and we've said enough for that to God be all the glory. But our dignity when He uses this verse in verse one the Father's bestowed upon us. That's you and I that are saved. And I'm, I'm not reading in that we're, we're right here. He's not stating that we're worthless. And, and, and He's not talking about us being a self-worth right here. He's talking about us worthy in the Lord. And I've been going over it, over it in Ephesians, in Ephesians study and relating to it in Ephesians 1. Amen. Our positional worth and our priceless wealth and our present whereabouts. Amen. Oh, thank God. We're worthy. He, he has honored us to be called the sons of God. Amen. Oh, our dignity, who we are as saved. Amen. I'm telling you, thank God. Uh, he calls us sons of God. You can't get no better than that. To be called a son of... And I've labeled this, this chapter the call of sonship. Amen. Here's the pronouncement of sonship right here. Thank God. The Father's bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. God's pronounced that. God has sure addressed it right here in this chapter. Amen. Our dignity, His honor that He's bestowed upon us to be one of His sons. Amen. Oh, the position of our sonship. Amen. It's in John chapter 1 and verse 10 says he was in the world speaking of the God man, the deity of Christ that was made flesh. He was in the world and the world was made by him and, it, and the world knew him not. And he said here in, in John, and I'm turning over there. If you want to turn with me to the Gospel of John, the same writer that we're reading after today, I penned it down. And in John chapter number 1, amen. And it's in verse number 10 that I'm picking up with our reading in John chapter 1. And this blessed King James Bible said he was in the world. And the world was made by Him. And the world knew Him not. And in verse 11, He came unto His own, that's the Jew, and His own received Him not. But if you're saved now, you can put yourself right here. As many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Amen. I'm talking about our dignity. Oh, He's made us a son of... we become a son of God when we got saved. Amen. The pronouncement, but the position. Amen. He's put us in a fixed position. Thank God. And it won't change. I'll be a son of God on tomorrow, whether I feel saved or whether I even act like I'm saved sometimes. I'm still God's child. Amen. And well, I'm telling you, he, he's, he put us under, uh, uh, beyond any condemnation that would come our way. He's put us beyond all that and erased our past. And, and I'll tell you, saved us past, present, present and future in the mind of a holy God or oh, the position of our sonship. Amen. All oh, this Bible said, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Not only pronounced and positionally, but practically. We're sons of God practically after we're saved. Look at it. Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 12. Right here it is on the pages of Scripture. If you want to read with me. Philippians 2.12 And he said, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation 
with fear and trembling, and that means His salvation. He give his, He give us His salvation. Amen. It's His salvation. That's what David said in Psalm 51 in the penitent prayer when he could come back to God and repented and acknowledged that he sinned, and he said, "Restore unto me the joy of." thy salvation but after we're saved he's telling us to work out this salvation how with fear and trembling for it is god which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure do all things without murmurings and disputings now notice that ye may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain neither labored in vain. Amen. On a practical note on this day we're sons. Amen. He tells us that we're to be sons. Amen. Of God without rebuke in a crooked in a midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world and the only witness that people is going to get most often I tell you most people won't pick up a Bible and read it I'm you, but our life is being read somebody's watching our life and we're to be a light as a city that's set on a hill that cannot be hid Matthew chapter 5 and we were to show forth the praise of him who have called us uh, by his marvelous into the marvelous light. Amen. God turned on the light when he saved us and we're to be a light to a world that's unsaved. Amen. Our dignity, our worth, our honor is right who we are as, as saved on this day. Not only pronouncement uh, wise and a positional wise and a practical wise, but on a perfect wise. Amen. We're going to be perfectly presented as sons of God. Look at Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 5 and we're getting a lot of these Pauline epistles connected with this message from 1 John chapter 3. But look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5 having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. God having predestinated, that means he beforehand has determined, thank God, and going to bring it to pass. At one day at the appearing of our Lord Jesus, we'll bear the very image of our Lord Jesus. My text said, I read it this morning in 1 John 3, Now we the Son of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Amen. And I'm telling you, at the rapture in a split second, before you could even bat an eye, we're going to get that change. Amen. A change is coming for God's people that are saved. Paul put it this way in Philippians 3.20, for our conversation or our citizenship is in heaven from whence we look for the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body and fashion it like unto his glorious body by the working whereby he's able to subdue all things unto himself. Amen. I'm saying our divine Father is here in verse 1 of 1 John 3. And our dignity is here in verse 1, 2, and 3. Amen. Oh, thank God uh, He's bestowed upon us His love uh, and called us sons of God. Amen. And sons of God we are. What an honor to be a son of God. And one day perfectly at the appearing of our Lord when he shall appear I'm telling you, he's going to bring it to pass that's what predestination means it's only for the sake he's predetermined that we'll be changed amen and to bear the image of our Lord Jesus Christ and then on a privilege note amen look at Romans chapter 8 and I'm, I'm trying to get along in this little message on this day but look at 
Romans chapter number 8 and verse 14. And right here is Paul penned it down. And he's talking about the believer, a son and an heir. And he said in Romans 8, 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. Amen. God has already given us the Spirit. He did that. He convicted us and brought us in put us in Christ and took up his residence in us. Amen. And sealed us for his very own. And thank God he sent the spirit of adoption in our heart whereby we cry Abba Father. Amen. Just like a little baby and when it gets up at any age at all starts crying for its father or mother. Amen. And so it's just natural for you and I as a child of God to call God our Father and Christ Amen our blessed Savior our Redeemer our Regenerator and our Reconciler Amen and so we're seeing as I look down at this there's the privilege of being son He's given us the spirit of adoption in our heart whereby we cry Abba Father. That's a reality. Amen. That's why we pray God our Father and in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then we've not only seen our divine Father who He is and our dignity who we are as saved, but we see our destiny. What we shall be our destiny. Amen. Look at it in verse 2, beloved. Now are we the sons of God, and it doth not, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And so when I read in this chapter 3 and verse 2, I'm saying he said it doth not yet appear what we shall be. And I say that looks forward. Amen. Our prospects for the future. What we shall be. Where are we going when we leave the stage of action and when we meet our blessed Lord? Well, I'll tell you where we're going. We're going to glory. Amen. We're going to be with our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody said heaven is a place, but it's more than a place. It's a prepared place. Amen. Oh, I'm talking about our destination. Amen. Our destiny, not hell, not the lake of horror, not judgment, not tribulation. But I'm telling you, when we leave here, he's going to call us up to the third heaven. And we're going by the way of the judgment seat of Christ. That's believers in Christ. And, and of course, the marriage of the Lamb and the marriage supper of the Lamb coming back to this earth, amen, to reign and rule with our Lord Jesus, a reign a thousand years, and then He's going to put us in that place that He prepared. Oh, He told His troubled disciples, well, in John 14, 1, He said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in Me, for in My Father's house are many mentioned. And if it were not so, I would have told you so. But I go to prepare you a place, and if I go, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And as sure as we're in this house on this day and breathing God's air, I'm telling you, as sure as God's on the throne and Christ at the right hand of the Father, as sure as the Spirit of God indwells our heart, I say, thank God, our destination is sure. Amen. Thank God heaven is our home, our eternal 
home. He, he prepared. He said, I'm going to go away and prepare a place for you. I, I feel like it's already prepared. God don't have to do nothing but just speak and bring it into fruition. Amen. A prepared place and a promise. But he promised. He said, if I'm going to go away, I'll come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. And on this day, we don't yet know what it shall be, but we have the promise of God that God cannot lie, an immutable God who cannot lie, who cannot change. I'm telling you, He cannot change for better because He's perfect. Amen. Oh, God who cannot lie, I that made the promise. Amen. Oh, thank God our destiny, where we are going. Heaven a prepared place, a promised place, heaven a perfect place. And you have to agree, we're living in perilous time. We're living in America, the United States of America. And I don't think it's hardly right to say God bless it. And we do want God to bless America. But I'm afraid with all this same-sex marriage and all this uh, all this perversion that's going down the way and killing babies by the millions, uh, I tell you, I'm not sure that God's going to bless them murder. I'm not sure whoever gets to be the president of the United States and nowhere. I'm not sure that God's going to hate not God and going to favor the United States of America, this nation alone. Not less the other. I'm saying Psalm 917 is still in this King James Bible. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God and America's forgot God went away from God and I'm telling you make a mock at God with all their sex perverted junk but I'm saying on this day our destiny we that are saved have a destination we have a place that's been prepared a place that's promised and a perfect place Amen. I've read the last pages of the revelation and it talks about the seven no mores amen no sickness no sign no separation that's dead no sin no Satan I'm telling you the list keeps on going on a perfect place where sin will not be permitted. Amen. Oh, thank God. The prospects for the future. Heaven's a permanent place. Amen. Oh, it's the residing place now of the sovereign God. He makes his residence there. And he's not He's not just a, 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 he's just not there just in one place. He can be in all places at all times. But actually the residing place of God the Father and God the Son is in heaven. Amen. Isaiah said it well in 66, Isaiah 61, 6, 66 in verse 1, The heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. And what is the house you'll build for me? All the reside. Heaven means something to God's place. It's the residing place of God the Father Himself. It's the redeeming pledge of the Savior. Hebrews 9, 12 said, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by His own blood. That's the Lord Jesus. By His own blood, He entered into the holy place once, having obtained eternal redemption for us. I say heaven's the redeeming pledge of the Savior. Amen. He took that blood after He arose from the dead. After he'd showed himself, he took that blood, amen, and sprinkled it on the mercy seat in heaven. And we have the pledge in heaven, thank God. Oh, the Lord Jesus, his blood is there. Thank God, oh, having obtained eternal redemption for us. And not only is it the residing place of the sovereign and the redeeming pledge of the Savior, but it's the registered place of the saints. Amen. I'm glad my name's on the roll this morning. Amen. My name down here don't mean much. But I'm glad that the night God saved my wretched soul and from the eternal counsels of eternity past God put my name in the Lamb's book of life and ain't no devil, no demon, no nobody in hell and nobody can erase it. Amen. Thank God sealed by the blood of the Lord, the rest place uh, 
of the saints. First Peter 1 3, Peter said it this way, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again, hath begotten us again into a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible undefiled and defiled that now I need to get on get on that verse some almost about forgotten and I'm going to get it in I promise you by the help and grace of God and he said here to an inheritance incorruptible undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved listen reserved in heaven for you are kept to the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time I'm telling you of the restored heaven is something for us that are saved heaven is a restored place of the saints see? and then heaven is a rewarding the rewarding presentation of the servants amen the lord said my reward is with me to give every man according to his deeds amen and i'm glad thank god when the rewards handed out when the crowns are given amen god's servants are going to be right there not just preachers and pastors and, and bible teachers but God's people have labored with man, the man of God in the church. Eh? I'm telling we're going to share together in reward. Paul mentioned it to the church and I'm closing. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 19, 20. He said, what is our hope or joy or account of rejoicing? And he said, are not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? That means something. Heaven is going to be the rewarding presentation of the service. Though those that have served the Lord with all true humility and for the honor and the glory of the Lord Jesus, I'm telling you, God's going to make it up. He's going to reward those for their faithful service. Amen. Our destiny, where we shall be. Amen. Thank God. Heaven. And oh, thank God. I tell you, there's so much here in this man. But anyway, our disowning foes is here. And when he said, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Yes, we sure do. We sure can't get adjusted to this world of sin and religion and all that the devil using to attract and allure and his scheme. But I'm saying our disowning there's a world that God loves. I said, John 316, the world of mankind, sinner. But there's a world that we should not love, worldly things, things that appeal to the lust of the flesh and the pride of life and, and, and all that. But then there's a world that we're warned. There is a world we're warned not to love. Oh, our disowning foes, and then last but not least, our defining hope is right here. Amen. He that hath this hope in verse 3. And I plan to re, re, re bring this message back up on the next lesson. The good Lord will not through it all, but our hope here. And he said, everyone that hath this, every man that hath this hope in him, purified himself even as he is pure. Our defining hope. Hope. God's people, I'm telling you, have a hope that's been set before us. Hebrews 6. A hope that's sure. Hebrews 6. And a hope that is steadfast. Hebrews 6. Amen. Oh, you, you hope for a better day in America? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. God robes us with His blessing, uh, His riches and blessings down here as say, but you just can't look for a better day in America. Nothing but heartache and trouble. But I'm glad we look beyond it on this day. God has set before us a hope. Amen. All the hope of the imminent appearing of our Lord Jesus. He that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Well, 